Welcome in, everybody. This is uh, Out of Touch with yours truly, John Alden, the least interesting man in the world. That's Mitchell Page. No Dustin Shooty again today. We'll get into that here in a second. But I wanted to bring us into something a little different because, first of all, I love this vibe. And it's very, I'm feeling very emo Nemo tonight, Mitchell. You ever heard that phrase, emo Nemo? I haven't, but I can understand. He's like, in I feel like I'm you. kind of in my emotions a little too much. I feel like I need to just get something out of me. And, and this song really kind of, it really kind of brings that out, I guess. This is Every Night by Jameson Flood. And I just wanted to bring us into that today. Normally, I don't bring us into something that could potentially get us copyrighted, but this Mr. Jameson Flood, he's fairly, and I would go as far as to say he is unknown probably by 95% of the universe, maybe more than that. So if he wants to copyright us, I mean, it's he has the, the ability to do that, so feel free. But if not, <laughs> got up to Jameson Flood and... If this if this gets to you, and I know it won't, then you know we'll bring you on the show, and I'll, I'll praise how great this song is. I believe he has this song and one other song. I haven't listened to the other one, but when I heard this, I went to his little page, and I saw that he had a second one, but I didn't give it a listen yet. But yeah, anyways, just wanted to bring us into a bit of a different vibe. It's a late night for Mitchell and I. We're recording this. On a Thursday, normally we record on Tuesdays and release on Wednesdays. Today's Thursday, we're releasing on a Friday. It's been just kind of a, a wonky week. On Tuesday, when we were supposed to do this initially, Mitchell, you were traveling from, I mean, you can get into it, but like you were, you had flights delayed. You weren't getting to where you needed to get to on time because of some inclement weather, right? Yeah, there was the... I think the whole East Coast was getting hit with big storms, tornadoes, uh, some serious weather. So I was lucky to even get home on Tuesday. But, yeah, I was hoping to be coming to you live from either the Atlanta airport or the West Palm Beach airport. But neither of those ended up happening. So here we are on Thursday night at 9, 12 p.m. But it's going to be a good one no matter what. Now, the Atlanta airport, as somebody who is not super familiar with anything other than the Louisville International Airport and the Orlando Airport, whatever that one's called, I'm, I, I am very aware that the Atlanta airport is the largest like commercial airline airport in the United States. Is it, is it as ridiculous as it sounds? Is it horrible to be in? Do you feel like there's just way too many people everywhere you look? Yeah, I've spent a lot of time in there. Um, it always feels like when you land, there's, it feels like infinity terminals and it always feels like when you land, your connection is always in the farthest possible terminal and you've got to <laughs> go down, get on the subway, ride that thing to wherever you need to get to. Uh, it's just a, it's always a hassle. It always is a tight connection. I've been running through those halls many times uh, from one end of the airport to the other, sweating when I finally get to the plane. Not my favorite place to be. They do have a bunch of really good options for food, though. Uh, that was something that my wife made sure that she pointed out when I was in Atlanta. She's like, just make sure you get something delicious because there's so many options. Um, and she's right about that. But I would prefer... Maybe not anywhere else, but a lot of other places I would prefer to be than the Atlanta airport. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I guess that brings us to our other co-host, Dustin Schutte, who is unable to be with us tonight. Uh, he wasn't originally going to be available on Tuesday either. He is currently on one of his many, I guess, traveling escapades, if you will. I don't even know if the phrase I just said is a real phrase, but we're going to roll with it. He is a nomad at heart. He, and I don't want to speak for him because I honestly don't know all of the destinations he's been in, but I think if you would take the past 10 years of Dustin's life, I think he has lived in more places than I probably ever will in my entire life. And I'm not just talking about, 
I went from one side of the county to the other. Like Dustin's gone from Indiana to Florida, Georgia. There may be some other places in between that I'm not thinking of, but he he he's a world traveler. At least, I mean, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but he likes to get around. He likes to he likes to be out in nature. He likes to go on walks. He loves taking his dog biscuit for a walk. And I know I'm not saying anything that some of you probably haven't heard before. Dustin has at times expressed all the things I just mentioned, but point being, he he told us on Tuesday that he was exp- he was in a place where he had some really bad service and that there was some severe weather on the way and he was worried that it was going to be a problematic for him. So I don't know exactly what the situation is today, but kudos to you, Mr. Shooty. We will reconnect with you soon. And uh, I'm glad that the severe weather didn't take down your vehicle that you're traveling in. What I think he said he was in an RV. I could be wrong. Yeah, that's what I remember him saying. So we'll we'll check in and we'll hear about his adventures next time that he stops by. I know he got to play some golf the other day, which Mitchell, I'm sure that I'm sure that really I was happy to see um, it. Yeah, happy to see. And uh, you yourself, be- right before showing up to record tonight, you were at you told me you were at a golf simulator, and I saw a photo that you posted on Instagram, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I have I didn't know that what you were what, what you did existed i'm not sure what it is so i'm curious what is this golf simulator that you partook in yeah so now that i'm officially an indiana resident once again um i promise i will have a more fun background for those on youtube this is very (laughs) bland and white mine's pretty bland too to be honest i know i've got the two pictures and maybe i'll add some more stuff down the line actually i will it's just a matter of when but yeah yeah, i'm with you on the background stuff yeah i maybe i'll just blur it because it's It's making me tired just looking at it, Um, but we're getting settled in Indiana. It's 20 degrees, so obviously we're not going outside to play golf, Uh, and there's a place downtown called Five Iron Golf, and I've been to places similar. There's another place in Carmel called X Golf, but it's just indoor simulators. They've got food, a bar, um, and just really high-quality turf and simulators to allow you to play the different courses. Just hit shots. I haven't played in like a month since the Barstool Classic. Uh, so tonight was not – I didn't feel like Tiger Woods. I'll tell you that. Uh, I didn't throw any clubs or anything, but we need to practice is what I'm going to tell you, John. <laughs> I need to practice. I'm terrible. And it may keep me up in, tonight. Thank you. Well, so it's, it's obviously not a real golf course. So how – like, do you feel like – since it's considered a simulator, I guess it's supposed to be close to the real thing, even though you didn't shoot well, you like, and and by the way you're talking, it sounds like you feel like you had at least a semi real experience with something that isn't technically a a real golf course. Yeah. So the way that it works, it's uh, like a projector on the big screen, which you saw in the story. So when you hit the ball, the turf interaction isn't super realistic. Like the, the grass feels a little different than hitting off those mats. Ball sits up a little better. It's a little easier to hit the ball solid. Um, But I can feel if I hit one left, it hits the screen and the ball goes left on the screen. You see the ball, the trajectory of it continue onto the screen. And basically, if you're playing a golf course, if you hook your shot, you're going to have the the course laid out in front of you visually and you hit it left, the ball's going to end up left and in the trees probably. Um, <laughs> and that's where I spent a lot of time today. A lot of outside to in swinging. Not good. Not good. Were you glad to be back in Indiana? Obviously, you, you've showed up right on time with the impending snowstorms that are coming. Definitely more so in your area than where I'm at in the Louisville, Kentucky part of the country. Um, We're supposed to get a little bit of snow, not a ton, I believe, but we are going to get temperatures down like into the 20s and the teens and stuff like that. And even like overnight lows lower than that. But you showed up just in time for the dog days of, of January and February where sometimes you may be trapped in your house for a couple of days, depending on how much snow you get. Yeah, the first morning that we woke up here as full-time residents, 
looked outside and there was however many inches, three, four inches of snow on the oh, ground. So you've already seen it. You've already had it come your way. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, Friday, I believe, okay. last Friday. Uh, and then I flew to West Palm Beach, so it was back in Florida. So I actually haven't really adjusted to the cold yet. It's going to take me some time. I've been out of it a while, and it's not my favorite thing in the world. But we're getting used it, to it. We're getting. It doesn't bother me the way that I feel like it bothers most people. I feel like a lot of people, when they say, like, if it's going to be 20 degrees or whatever, it might as well snow. I, I, I'm definitely in that camp. I like looking at snow. I think it adds to... I don't want to say the atmosphere. I think that sounds that seems kind of weird to say, but like it, it has a certain. I don't know. It gives the day a little bit of extra personality, especially where I live. We maybe get, we get a good snow, at most probably twice a year. Last year we only got a good snow once, and it was right around Christmas, so that was really cool. This year, obviously, we're supposed to get a little bit this weekend, and who knows if we'll get any more after that. So. It, it, it's more of an event down here than, than say, you know, if you live in the regular part of the Midwest. Some people say Louisville, Kentucky is part of the Midwest. I feel like it's more so the northernmost point of the South. We get a little bit of different types of weather in Kentucky, and maybe a lot of states say that, but I definitely feel like with Kentucky, you're not so much Midwestern as – Maybe some people make it out to be. I'm sure you would agree with that. Yeah, I think all of Kentucky is the South. Um, but my new territory for work includes Michigan as well. So I'm going to be seeing some serious snow in the coming weeks. I was supposed to go to Grand Rapids today, but there's however many feet of snow there. So Speaking of Michigan, how do you feel about, and we'll get, I got one other college football thing I'm going to mention other than what I'm about ready to say, but how do you feel about Michigan being the national champions after all that's kind of, and, and to give context for those who haven't kept up with it, Michigan was accused of essentially cheating, uh, not just for this season, but over the course of the last couple of seasons, there was a staff member by the name of Connor Stallions who was being sent to opponents' games to learn their team's signs in order to bring back to Michigan and then let the coaching staff know, hey, this is what this means if they throw up, I don't know, a heart. Oh, this is a, a random example. So they can know what, what kind of plays are coming. And a lot of people... I don't know if it's necessarily been proven that all of that. I mean, there's a lot of evidence, like like ticket sales and like proof that this guy was at these games, um, and a lot of it. Like if you if you look back to where some of these ticket receipts date to, a lot of it kind of corresponds to when Michigan kind of started to get good again because they've been kind of mediocre for several seasons, and then the last two to three years they they've really turned it on and made it to the college football playoff. Well, it finally came to a head and they won the national championship. So my question for you, Mitchell, do you feel like this is – I mean, a lot of people have said that there should be an asterisk next, next to Michigan as a national champion. Do you think that's the case, or do you think it's fair and square? Uh, I would say it's probably more fair than not. Everybody's stealing signs, maybe not to that degree, sending people to the games. Um, but – at the end of the day, if you just block your dude as an offense, <laughs> you can still score points, right? Like the best offenses don't do anything that's flashy and a defense probably knows what's coming pretty quickly in the game, but you still have to stop it. So yeah, they were the best team in the country, but if I'm just being honest, that, that was my least favorite team to play. Um, I, and I'm, going to alienate myself with maybe a, a fan base here, but just think there's a lot of arrogance that comes out of Ann Arbor. Uh, so yeah, I, out of anyone in the big 10, I cheer against them the most. Um, I don't care who they would have been playing. I cheered for Alabama and I cheered for Washington. I, obviously I think I would have cheered for Washington against a lot of people. Uh, but even if Texas had won that game, I would have cheered for Texas over Michigan. Uh, I just, I don't love that program. I think that there's a lot, a lot of arrogance uh, 
particularly with the players that play there. And this is going back to when I was there and they were not good. I mean, relative to the big boys, they were better than us, but uh, they were not good. And it just, I don't know. They, they rubbed me the wrong way. I, I don't cheer for them really in any sport at any time. It hasn't. So I, I've not had too many interactions with Michigan fans, but from what I see online, I think what you're saying tends to be kind of true. Um, and, and again, it, every fan base has their their bad apples, and they may just have <laughs> some more bad apples compared to most. Yeah. Um, I don't really have an issue with Jim Harbaugh. I actually think he's he's kind of a funny character, if you will. Yeah, he's just kind of a dork. I think he's a great coach. Yeah. He obviously gets the best out of his players. The players love him. He's a huge dork. I actually believe – that maybe he didn't know that the sign stealing was happening just because he's kind of not oblivious. Oblivious is the wrong word, but he's so focused on what's happening in the here and now on the camp on campus with his team. I think there's a chance he wasn't really even paying attention to what was happening. Um, I think that's probably a better way to phrase it. Not oblivious. Yeah. Just, um, him, yeah. I mean, maybe it's more likely that he was unaware to the extent that they were going to get some right, of the information. Right, right. I, I think every coach will tell you they're stealing signs, and they probably have a guy on staff, no matter where you go, that's job it is, at least during the game, to have the binoculars in the booth trying to pick something up from their signs. That's every team. Yeah. Everyone does that. Not even really cheating. That's just a part of the game. Um and yeah, I, I think he may have just not even been, not even been a part of it. So I don't, <laughs> I don't have a problem with him either. I, I really think it just comes down to me not being just biased against the program in general. Yeah. One one other college football note I want to mention. It's basically because it's been the biggest news story in sports for sure over the past day and a half, and maybe one of the biggest news stories in general outside of, you know, things going on in other countries that we really haven't talked about on a show like this, obviously. Mm. Um, but Nick Saban, the legendary head coach at Alabama, won seven national championships, six of them at Alabama, one of them at LSU. He decided out of the blue earlier this week that he was just going to retire. He didn't do the whole Mike Krzyzewski, you know, we're going to have a farewell tour kind of thing. He just kind of bluntly let people know. And apparently, like, it was so out of the blue that even his players didn't know that he was planning on retiring. And recruits, there was a, a I saw a, a post yesterday of a recruit who was so caught off guard that he decommitted because not only was Nick Saban no longer going to be on staff, but he was he was already struggling to keep his commitment because there was an assistant who was no longer going to be on staff. And so Nick Saban leaving kind of like solidified that for him. So it's interesting that somebody so legendary is going out, I guess, so quietly. And um, Mitchell, I definitely want to hear your thoughts just in general. I mean, we obviously all know how great of a coach Nick Saban is mm. and maybe – Maybe kind of like Tom Brady, you don't understand how great he was necessarily until after he's gone because a lot of people hated Tom Brady and a lot of people don't like Nick Saban just because Alabama's always been the team to beat in college football. And it's, it's, you know, it's just all coming to a halt. Like they'll have somebody else on the sideline next year. Yeah. It's definitely with the Tom Brady, the Nick Sabans of the world, it's a hate us because you ain't us scenario. If yep. Tom Brady played for your team, whatever your team is, I mean, you would do anything. You would go to jail for that guy. Kind of like Caitlin Clark team. with Iowa women's basketball. Everybody hates Caitlin Clark unless you like Unless Iowa. she's on your team. Exactly. Um, and it just – so that's obvious. Everybody's going to be mad about whatever until he's gone. They're happy he's gone. But, I mean, you're really losing. It's no surprise to me that he went out like he did. Uh, and my guess is he didn't even start thinking about it until Alabama got beat by Michigan. Uh, I would guess that just the way that he handles his business, the way that he handles his players, he's a hundred percent bought into the season. He's going to do everything he can. Or he's not even thinking about what he's going to be doing later. It just is, what are we doing right now and how can we win? That's been his, in every press conference you watch, he's hyper-focused on just, 
being the best that he can be, making his players the best that they can be. He's not worried about what's going to happen next year, the following year, five years from now. He's worried about what are you doing today? Little things that can get you the 1% better. That's what he's harped on. And that's what has been, that has been the ingredients that turned Alabama into one of the great dynasties. His run at Alabama is one of the great dynasties in college football history because of that mindset. So it doesn't surprise me at all that, hey, it's time to go. You know, like it's, I, I had 72. A great I don't even think I realized how old he actually was. Yeah, 72 years old. Looking up the other day. And he's been making $10 million for 10 years. He's going to go hang out. This year couldn't have been the easiest year in the world. He had a quarterback that was very average and didn't have the, the mega firepower that he's had in some other years. Um, coupled with a true leader at quarterback that could help him out on the field. It was probably his best coaching job to get them to where he got them. So you can say, oh, he's not even going out on top. I, I believe he really is. Uh, I mean, that was a true showcase in what a football coach can do. I People will say Jalen Miller is a good player. I'm sure he is, whatever. I think there's 25 quarterbacks in Division One that are better than him. Um, so when you're trying to win the national championship with a guy that's not even in the top 25 caliber quarterback, it's just a really hard thing to do. I mean, we saw what can happen at Washington when you get a guy like Michael Penix that throws it around everywhere and almost wins the Heisman trophy. All of a sudden now you're in the national championship. So that's how important that position is. Uh, and it just, it, it's never been about Nick Saban. It's never felt like, I mean, he was the face of the program, but differently than a guy like Mike Shashevsky, it never felt like Mike Shashevsky's Duke Blue Devils. Or, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it never felt like Nick get, Saban's Crimson like In time. Alabama, it's more about Alabama, whereas Correct. at Duke, it was more about Coach K. It's, that's what I'm trying to say. It, it never felt like the only time Saban was in the media was when he was doing a press conference talking about how he handles situations with his players, how he handles the Jalen Hurts to a Tagovailoa situation where you have two guys that are now top five quarterbacks in the NFL. How do you bench one and let the other kid go? And all he did is handle that with elegance, and he always has. And then it goes right back to the team. And that's what you want in a head coach. It's I can't imagine whoever – goes to Alabama after this, how do you even begin? I mean, I have no idea. The expectations, it, they're almost insurmountable. I don't care who it is. You're not going to live up to that. You just won't. You'll have all of the tools, but it's like all these great golfers trying to live up to Tiger Woods. You just, you'll never do it. No matter how great you are, you just can't do it, especially right after him. There may be. Now, a I've heard people say this now. today. You're, you're getting yeah. into what I was planning on uh, mentioning. You don't yeah. want to be the guy directly after. You want to be the guy after the guy. And I've heard people <laughs> say that all day today, and it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And somebody's going to want to take on that challenge. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, if you're if you're if you're somebody who follows this, you you see the names they're throwing up there, and and maybe they'll be successful. But I feel like. I feel like there's a lot of truth to that saying, like you want to be the guy after the guy because you you almost you 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 can't live up to the expectations that someone like Nick Saban created. I mean, you can try, and you will almost certain almost certainly fail. And if you fail enough, then that's going to lower expectations for the next person. And that's why it kind of it's a weird situation to be in if you're somebody who's interested in taking that job but yeah the only way you can make it work is if you set the expectation that you are not that person and this is in any situation this can be just working at your local store whatever it is if you had the guy in front of you you need to make sure that you set the expectation hey i am not nick saban i am mitchell page i'm not going to do things the way that he did things i'm going to try we've all been trying to do things that he's been doing for a long time but I have my way and what I've been doing has worked semi well. And I'm going to try to bring that here. And this is Alabama. You're going to have 
so many resources because you are the guy after the guy. They're going to believe that they're throwing this money at you. You're going to need help because you aren't Nick Saban, and the fans are going to expect you to be. They're going to have more influx of cash into that football program than they've had probably in a long time just because the boosters especially are like, we need this dude to to coach now. We don't have Nick Saban anymore to just – hold our hand and take us to the promised land. We're going to need a, a true coaching job. So um, I I think there's two sides to the coin. It's a lot easier to be the guy after the guy that probably gets fired. But I would guess there's some guys in college football that want to take it right now, see the opportunity for what it is, and try to keep the, uh, keep the train moving because it's a freight train if you can get it. Yeah. We'll go ahead and, and and move on from that. I know we, we we try to keep sports to a minimum, at least. Yeah, I like bringing up the big the bigger sports stories though, just because they they do leave such an impact on on, on the uh, country. Like, especially somebody like Nick Saban or a Tom yeah. Brady, somebody who's who's more than just a sports figure, but a cultural figure, if you will, and and not like Nick Saban's this massive personality. Like um, like a LeBron James, for example, but he's still somebody who comes so around. Great. Do what? That's what made him so great because he's yeah. not. He just is in the background winning games. Yeah, that's it. And and that's and that's really I feel like all anybody really wants in their coach if you're if you're going to be a championship caliber program. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Nick Saban. I rooted against you, probably my entire fandom, but I do appreciate what you did as a college football head coach. So, mm-hmm. one more thing I want to get into before we, I'm going to, we're going to we got a couple of calls we're going to get to here shortly. Um, but I did something the other day, Mitchell, and uh, actually, well, before I get too far ahead of myself, like I do sometimes, I'll just go and get right to the point. So, I've done this before. Uh, I don't do it very often, and I for good reason. If I do it too much, it takes away the magic of doing something like this. And so, w- sometimes whenever I work, whenever I go to work, and I have to work kind of like a double shift, if if you will, it's not quite a double like in the traditional sense. But sometimes I'll, I'll go into my afternoon job earlier than I normally do, and then have some space in between. Well, a few a couple of weeks ago. I, during that space in between, I drove over to, and Mitchell stopped me if, if I've already told the story. I know I've told it before on a different show. I don't think it was this show, but what I did was I drove over across the river. Louisville is um, right on the border for, of Southern Indiana. I used to live in Southern Indiana. Well, during those couple of hours that I had in between, I drove across and went over to the neighborhood that I used to live in as a kid growing up until I was, I guess I was about 11 years old. And I turned up some music and I just drove around and saw a lot of things that I hadn't seen in so long that just brought brought back a flood of, you know, nostalgia memories remembering whenever it was you know a simpler time and i feel like a lot of people you know they look back on their childhood and they hope I me mean, hopefully they had a good childhood and they remember experiences like that but it's cool to be able to live so close to the place where you grew up and then getting to drive over there and not even just the neighborhood itself but dr- the the roads leading up to it there it, where i used to live in jeffersonville is so much it's so much more built up from what it used to be when I was a kid. And it wasn't rural by any stretch of the imagination, but it was, it was, you know, a lot more, or I guess just a lot less built up than it is now. But seeing that really made me feel like so much time had gone by. But then I drove into the neighborhood and all of it seemed like it was back to the way it used to be. And it was, and the reason I bring this up, two things. One, Mitchell, I'm curious if you've ever done something like that. And then two, do people seek out those kinds of experiences? And if you don't, I think I think it's a very healthy thing for people to, if they have the ability to, first of all, re, I don't think rekindles the right word, but 
find that thing that brings you back to a more innocent time in your life, especially when things are stressful. And I think it's, it, I don't know, it, it brings back for me a good positive amount of energy that can sometimes be much needed. And that's why I say I don't do it a ton. And I know I feel like I've talked for way too long without letting you say anything, Mitchell, but I felt like there was a lot to explain with that for it to come across the correct way. Yeah, I I think it's even right off the beginning. It's I guess it depends on what your childhood was. Yeah, it's, it could be very different for, for yeah. For, for me, I was I was very fortunate. Uh, I grew up in an awesome neighborhood and had awesome neighbors that we played football in the backyard and all kinds of the night games, ghost in the graveyard kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Um, and that's something that I'm really excited to do now that I'm back. I, I've been out of out of the state for so long. Um, so I'm getting to do it with a bunch of different things. It's not just the neighborhood. It's even things in Indianapolis. We were just in Broad Ripple and I'm remembering streets I was on when I was living down there with one of my buddies that I haven't seen in forever. So it's been a kind of a full couple days of that nostalgia feeling, but there, there, it, it's really hard to beat uh, driving past the house you grew up in. And I can, anytime I go past the house I grew up in, the field we used to play sports in, typically football, was right next door. So I can drive by and that house is on the corner. I can make the right turn and I can see it all. And it just is, it's extremely healthy. And I, I'm really excited to do that. So I'll have to keep you posted. Um, when I go, maybe I'll send you a picture or something. Yeah, it's the, the, the moment you drive onto the street, even before you get to the house that you lived at, it is, yep. it's a feeling that is really hard to describe. And again, like, like I said earlier, if, if you, for, for those of you who are listening, if you have the ability to do that, if you live close enough to where you grew up and maybe some people, some people have never moved that far away from where they used to live. And maybe it doesn't yeah. have the same impact because you've been there your entire life. But if you're somebody who's moved away from your childhood home, but it's still, you know, maybe 30 or 45 minutes away, uh, take the time sometime soon to just drive past. And, and again, if you, if, if you've had, if you didn't have a good childhood, I understand why you wouldn't, but <laughs> if you're somebody who has, I think there's some healing that can be done if you don't. And there, yeah, there can be. I mean, and, and and if you're somebody who doesn't have or didn't have a good childhood home, maybe there's a different place that, you know, yeah. because there's, there's other places that I associate with those kind of feelings as well. Not as strongly. Everybody has their, I guess, a happy place, if you will. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that because it's, it's, I've, I've done it. I think four times in the past maybe four years not once a year two of those times were in the last six months for me the other two were a bit farther apart but uh highly recommend doing that if uh you know you want to want to make yourself feel good and we're in an age where mental health has become you know a higher priority for people and it should be i'm glad that it, the fact that society has made it a higher priority has helped me learn to make it a higher priority. So. Definitely. Definitely. Shout out I to learned society. that. I learned that there's a lot of dumb stuff that gets thrown around dumb ideas. That's not one of them. Um, <laughs> because it is, there's, it's a, it's just hard. Every day is hard. Um, so doing something as simple as going and seeing where it wasn't as hard. Uh, yeah. can, can really, uh, kind of pivot, especially uh, if you're feeling a little down. I don't know. I that's whenever I'm just feel like I'm in a rut. That's when I would always think back to those times, and I don't feel like that right now. But I'm still excited to to go back and maybe since I'm not in a rut and I'm more on level ground, it'll give me a little acceleration to start the year off right. I don't know. We'll there see. you go. 
Well, with that, we're going to go ahead and, and open up the phone lines. I say that like it's a live phone line. It's a voicemail line. For those of you who haven't used it before, if you want to leave us a message, all you got to do is call 502-830-9195. And I don't remember exactly how it works, but it, it'll prompt you to leave a voicemail. And shout out to those of you who have figured out how to do that. So without further ado, last week, Mitchell, you and I posed, we wanted people to send in uh stories about raising a child obviously you are are on that journey of pregnancy with your wife and Mm -hmm. several months down the road you'll be experiencing what it's like to have a kid for the first time so oh yeah we brought that question to the masses if that's what you want to call our listenership that's probably far from that but that's what people (laughs) say uh and we got uh one of these calls as a response to that so and we'll we'll we may treat this like we have uh, calls recently we may pause in the middle of this and you know take this one step at a time because i have listened to this already and there's there's different things in here and uh we'll just we'll go ahead and let it roll sweet hi hello this is john's friends from down the street just had the baby we have some crazy baby stories we have a ton um john can attest to that he's seen us struggle as we get used to being parents. Uh, the craziest one we have is his first blowout. Um, well, it wasn't really a blowout. I just put the diaper on wrong. And then he pooped while I was feeding him. So it was all over me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stop it right there. Uh, and, I, and uh, Mitchell, I'll let you respond to this too, but blowouts are the, it's probably the top of my list of things that I am not looking forward to whenever i eventually have a child of my own because and honestly i think it kind of speaks for itself mitchell i'll, I'll let you respond yeah to that. i don't think you need to say anything more about it um <laughs> i i think it's funny she put the diaper on wrong that's also up there on me i have no clue what i'm doing like i just want to make sure that i don't put the diaper on the head one time i don't know oh, man I, that's how off i am let's uh let's keep it rolling um my husband went to change him. We were trying to change him together, and he peed on both of us. And then we were like, okay, we're done with this. Let's just put him in the bath and just give him a bath and start over. And as soon as we got him in the bath, he pooped in the bathtub. And at that point, we just kind of sat in the bathroom laughing because what was our life and what were we doing? And we had no clue. And it was just, a funny moment and our biggest tip is just to remember to laugh at yourself um and just try to enjoy it there'll be crazy times and it'll be stressful but you just have to laugh at yourself and there's one more little bit but i wanted to go ahead and pause it right there yeah that's um, so good i i think that in that moment there that can have one of two things can happen the hysterical cry or the hysterical <laughs> laugh from both of you. I, I think there's there are that goes one of two ways. And being able to handle it with the hysterical laugh, uh, obviously, is uh, the one that makes you remember it fondly. But I'm not sure if this is where she's going to go. But when I'm listening to stories like that, it just I, I would say the most common thing that I hear uh, when I'm asked because we ask everybody like, "What can you tell us? Just what what's it like?" The most common thing we hear is how fast everything goes. So I don't know if that's where she's going to go, but my guess is when they were sitting there thinking there's poop everywhere and the kid has no (laughs) clue what's happening and you don't know what you're doing. Like that moment you talk about time, we talk about nostalgia, but it's gone in an instant and being able to. And what's crazy too. Yeah is like we're talking about childhood homes right like Mm -hmm. you're you living where you are now it may not be your childhood home but it's going to be your kids childhood home and the memories that they associated with i mean you may not realize the impact and actually i don't think it's possible for us to realize the impact things have on other humans we only know how it impacts ourselves, but we can do what we can to enhance that experience for those around us yeah definitely and it, it, there's no way to prepare for what your son or daughter will remember for the rest of their life. And that one makes me very excited. 
but scares the absolute crap out of me most of the time. <laughs> no pun intended, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and finish out this message. Just a couple have any seconds advice left. For uh, either become the house husband, so the housewife, or Mr. Mom. Do, mm. do one or the other. If you don't do either one, she's going to be really mad at you. It's not going to work. Yes, so. yes. Well, there's our tips and stories. Thanks for the shout out last week. Love the podcast. Bye. Well, there you go. And again, that for the, if you miss it, those are my, I mentioned them last week. They're my neighbors yeah. and they're our friends, both uh, mm-hmm. friends of mine and my wife. Uh, we also go to church together. So we, we've grown really close to them over the past few years. So shout out to them and their three month old, four month old, something like that. And you mentioned like how quickly it goes by. I've seen this baby grow up in a short amount of time. I mean, not every day, obviously, mm-hmm. but I mean, he went from being something that you didn't realize you couldn't believe how small he was to wondering how in the world he's already, I mean, he obviously he's still a baby, but he's already massive compared to what he used to be. So. It's insane. Were you ever really close to like when you were 14, 15, 16 years old? Did any of your friends, their family have another baby? Yes, actually. Somebody I went to high school uh, played on the soccer team with me. Um, so he he was my age yeah. and he had a younger brother who was my younger brother's age. But I think it was my senior year, our senior year. Um, his mom had an unexpected third child who obviously was 18 years younger than him. Yeah. Uh, And that was, and at this point, I guess he's now probably seven or eight years old. If my math is correct, which is kind of insane to think about, but yeah, yeah. I'm, I've got a similar, my best friend, uh, when we were both 16, so sophomores or junior in high school, his dad and stepmom had, two more little kids and they, I I can remember being on spring break with them when I was a junior in high school and they were doing ABC mouse and stuff like that. (laughs) And now the kid is like 13. He's going to high school next year. And it's just, I, I can remember like when he didn't really know how to talk me and Connor, my buddy, trying to get him to say stuff that he definitely shouldn't (laughs) say. And hopefully he repeated it in front of Connor's dad. And it just feels like that was yesterday. And so that's, as I've like gone farther, gotten farther and farther along with Laura's pregnancy, seeing how hard it is uh, to be pregnant and how the different emotions and feelings and, illnesses and soreness, <laughs> all the stuff that they deal with, how much tougher they are than me. Um, but as I've watched her go through that and we've gotten farther along, I've just started to think about truly time. And that's why I'm back in Indiana and how fast it all goes. So um, hopefully your friends are taking every second and taking some mental pictures. Cause man, what an awesome, awesome thing that they get to do every day. I'm, I'm, I can't wait. I've, I was saying this all this week. I feel like my whole life is built up to being a dad, everything that I've tried to do, whether it's which college I go to, who I cheer for to what job I have. Like, I can't wait if they're in the band and they play the trumpet, I'm going to learn the trumpet. <laughs> I'm going to be, we're going to do it together, whatever it is. I think I cannot wait. I think you're absolutely onto something like by saying that your life kind of builds up to it because when you become a dad and obviously I don't know this from personal experience, but obviously the the things that I hear and probably things you've heard too, whenever you have a kid, like you are, you are dying to yourself. If you're not dying to yourself already, you have to die to yourself to put that kid first because Mm -hmm. it is no longer your life. That is the most important. Uh, It is, it is your child's life that is the most important. And again, I'm saying this without any experience, <laughs> but I feel like that seems to be the general consensus of when you become a father or a mother, everything you do revolves around that child. And when you say your life builds up to it, I mean, and if you're building up to it and you finally get to that point, that's it. I mean, obviously you're not dead <laughs> to, you know, to be silly about it, but 
you're all your focus from that point on. You're, you're what, what, however you're many years old, you're no longer number one in that instance. You've been number one for, for me, I'm 26. I'm not obviously not about to have a kid yet though, but if it was 26, then it's no longer about you, even though only all, all you know is that it's been about you for 26 years. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that came across correctly, but yeah, I feel like that was kind of all over the place. No, I understand what you're saying. I, I think that the best dads and the only dad that I can use as an example is my dad. And my dad was the best dad. He sacrificed a lot of things to make sure that me and my sister had every opportunity to succeed and to do what we wanted to do. But I am going to tweak a little of what you said. And sure. I don't think you meant it this way. Okay. Okay. When you say die to yourself, mm-hmm. I think that has sort of a negative connotation because yeah, I, I can see I why feel, that would come across. I that feel way. like truly like my life is kind of just beginning. You're, I'm just now starting to realize like what's actually important, things that I care about. What do I need? What do I not need? And if you would have asked me when I was 25, there would have been a lot of things that I quote unquote needed that I can't even think of right now. Like either I haven't thought about some of the stuff I was thinking about when I was 25 in years. And <laughs> so that's what I'm, I'm so, I just feel like I'm in such a good spot um, for this. And it's amazing. The timing always works, doesn't it? It always works, but I'm just, uh, I'm ready and I'm nervous, but it is. It's, and we're going to talk probably more and more. So if you don't like talking about becoming a dad, this is going to be a long couple months for you as a listener. But that's right. It's, it's <laughs> okay is, though. Like well, that's the most part of this is like I mean, we're, we're we're going through life together as we do this show. However long it goes on, hopefully it's a long time. All three of us are going to go through different phases and experience right. things that we haven't experienced before, and. It's going to be fun kind of documenting that. E- even if this podcast becomes nothing more than what it is right now, one thing we'll always have is seeing <laughs> seeing, seeing the progression of, of, of learning new experiences. And yeah. that'll that's kind of a cool thing to think about. Well, I hadn't thought about that, but I can picture us 10 years from now listening oh to episode, whatever this is, 24. 24 today. Yeah, yeah. like that is... That's a cool thought, John. That's Getting meta thought. again. All right, one one more call, and then we're gonna wrap this thing up for the night. Okay. Uh, we did we talk about pickleball last week? This 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 call is about pickleball. I think we did. I think I we t- talked about I, pickleball recently, and someone I left about us how uh, loud it is. It's the loudest sport ever. <laughs> I do remember that now. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll roll the tape on this one. Hey there, out of touch. I'm one of your biggest fans. I'm going to go on this as Mama Cat. And I just had some input. I know last week you guys talked about pickleball. And I can tell you that me and my husband, we love pickleball. And it is for all ages. We learned about pickleball through our son, our older son that's 28, and his friend that's 40. Um, And I tell you, they challenged us. It was a great, great game. We ended up buying our own racket, and then my other son purchased a pickleball set for him and his girlfriend. We've currently played them. We play our friends that we play volleyball with, and let me tell you guys, it is a workout. You all can laugh about it and stuff and make cracks, and that's fine, but you all are out of touch because it is a great (laughs) workout for all ages. It's a cross between- Pause real quick. I love how they just used our show against us right there. Yeah, I mean- I know right there, Mama Cat. I think we might have mentioned how behind the times we are with this sport. This is the exact reaction that you get from anyone that plays it. That's all I have. Like they act like it's the the bet the best thing in the world and we we just don't get it kind of thing, right? Yeah, like we are so behind in the world, we don't understand, we'll never get it, we're not even invited. And she's Let's, not doing that, but a lot of times, <laughs> that's the response that I get is, oh, you don't already play? Well, you must be some kind of loser because if you were cool, you would already be playing is the response I get a lot. Let's uh, let's wrap this one up. It's a cross between ping pong and tennis. And I can tell you that 
me and my husband would challenge you, John, and one of your co-hosts there. So when it warms up, get ready. She doesn't want these problems. Love listening to you guys. Keep up the good work. Mama Cat's out. Mama Cats, you don't want these problems. That's what I'm going to tell you. You don't want these problems. Maybe John and Dustin. You do not want these problems. I think Dustin would probably be their best chance at finding someone who is remotely competitive because Dustin did play Division Three tennis, correct? Yeah, and I bet he's sick. I bet he is sick. The best I can do is whoop you in ping pong, but I, I don't think that translates well to pickleball. I think I would destroy you in ping pong. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I got to say, I, I, I'm a pretty cocky son of a gun with ping pong. And uh, yeah. when I was in North Carolina during our fall vacation, um, I was with my wife's family. I know I talked a little bit about it before. Whenever, you know, I was in the hot tub for way too long. Mm -hmm. It was way back when. <laughs> uh, but while we were on that vacation, uh, one of my wife's cousins, you know, we, we both were trash talking some ping pong. And I, again, like we're doing right now, very confident in myself. And I won one game out of probably seven, lost six of them. It was <laughs> a very humbling experience for me on the ping pong table. I was going to say, I assume that story went the other way. And my response yeah. was going to be, everybody's the biggest and baddest in their family. But I'm, it's not me. Uh, yeah, apparently. That, that, that's why I'm already, that's why I'm questioning myself. Because I'm sitting here wanting to defend my, my smack talk, if you will, if that's even what this might be. But honestly, I, I'm, the more I even try to convince myself that I could beat you or should beat you, the more I think I actually believe that you would probably beat me 21 to 3 or something like that. I can go a little in ping pong, just a little, not a lot. I, no, I can rally. Like I can, like, here's the thing. You, you may beat me by a large margin, but it, my issue is I don't win the long, the long rallies. Like if we're going back and forth for about 45 seconds, I lose all those points. I don't, I don't have the stamina for whatever reason to get those points. 45 seconds is the longest ping pong rally in maybe history of time. And, but, and, and I realized when I said, I, I almost wanted to say a minute and a half, but I'm like, that's not realistic. <laughs> no, in the I think 20 seconds is a long rally. Um, yeah. But I understand what you're saying. I, I think we do need to set up a, a match. Now that we're all <laughs> semi-local, before <laughs> Dustin goes to St. Louis, I think he'd probably be the best of the three of us. If we find him. We may, we may find out that Dustin's packed up and moved to freaking Montana, for all we know. That is... As likely as anything else. Absolutely. But if we can get him when it's warm, I'm guessing he's our ringer. We need him just because he has experience with the racket and movement yeah. and strategy. I'm semi-quick and coordinated, and I, I think I would be okay. I, I don't know. I, I think it would be fun. I, I'm going to be playing. I know I'm going to be playing. Everyone that I know here plays – I've been fighting it and pushing it off long enough. I'm giving in. I'm giving in this spring throughout the summer. I'm just doing that. So well, there hopefully you go. I'm be in enough shape. Uh, I'm going to probably to wrap this one up, but I want to go ahead and mention a couple of things. I know I've talked about TikTok for the past couple of weeks, and uh, I chatted with my friend, Elijah Mitchell, uh, the dude who – I hate saying TikTok famous. For some reason, that feels like a derogatory term. He he's he's made good off of being good at TikTok. I spoke with him recently, and um, he's kind of given me some pointers. And by the time the next episode releases, so not this one, the next one will be on TikTok. I'll explain how y'all can follow us on there. Also, I'm gonna do something that scares me, and and I've mentioned it before, but like I haven't done it yet because I have to just muster up the courage to do it. I'm going to reach out to someone who might potentially be our first guest. And it's not even, it's not a someone it is, it is a music artist that is very young in their career. Um, and hopefully they'll give me the time of day. I'm going to reach out to them here in the next few days. Please and uh, hopefully, hopefully on the next episode, I'll either already have it booked for us, or maybe I can give you a response for how that's going to go. We're going to try to do some different things here, as I've mentioned before on Out of Touch in 2024. So hopefully you it. guys are excited to come along for the ride. Mitchell, what a what a fun episode. And I'm going to go ahead and do something. I know you don't like it when I play us out, but I'm bringing us back in with that every night Jameson Flood needs to fade us out because 
I feel like, like I said at the beginning of this, this fits that emo Nemo, and I know that's a weird... I stole that phrase from Theo Vaughn, by the way. Shout out to Theo Vaughn, who also won't hear this podcast. <laughs> but this is the kind of music you envision. You're driving through your neighborhood. You're trying to relive... Maybe not relive, but take yourself back to that moment where yeah. times were simpler. So, again, I encourage you, go, go do something that brings you back to a simpler time this weekend. With that, I think we'll go ahead and wrap this thing up, Mitchell. Any last yeah. words for today? I got nothing. I I think this song's awesome. I'm going to have you send me the link to it. Uh, <laughs> but just everybody, have an awesome weekend. This comes out on Friday. That's right. It comes out, a little bit this it'll weekend. be Friday when this comes out. Yeah, have enjoy your weekend. And um, hopefully, barring – I mean, you never know. Things get in the way all the time, but we should be back to our – regular you know time slot if you will that's even next what you week. want to call it yep. a regular release schedule next week so thanks for listening as always and we'll talk to you next time